see in here. But it should be picking so much. Stuff. Hope I'm getting this all. The ancient illusion. You see what it says about the ancestral masons. Look at the numbers. Look at the numerology there. Involved. Check out the artistic influences of Mary Coulter, who is behind this tower. says that she worked with um, artists to adorn, to adorn the walls with meaningful images. So we're going to see that when we go inside. Hopi artist Chester Dennis created incised petroglyphs on the interior parapets. Another Hopi artist, Fred Cabote, wove the history of his people into the murals on the first floor. Fred Geary precisely copied drawings found in ancient sites. Chester Dennis, these are all people involved in creating this tower. Now there's a tower here called the Tower of Ra and a temple called the Temple of Isis. We'll be seeing those too very shortly. But this is the tower, the watchtower. For all of those who are familiar with the Jehovah Witnesses, you know that that's a term that they use. And yes, uh, their origins can also be traced back to masonry. They are also too uh, involved with the systems of the world to not have been compromised, if you understand what that means. And the watchtower is a symbol important to masonry. We just saw that. Here's another. This talks about the T-shaped door, or you could say a cross-shaped door, the diamond pattern rocks, the petroglyphs, and the ornamental masonry, revealing features according uh, to this uh, explanation, official explanation concerning the watchtower. Let's continue. Of course, off to the right you have the canyon, the massive Grand Canyon. We're going to look at that, of course. It's a, it's a National Historic Landmark. When you understand the history of the nation, it makes sense to you why these landmarks have such occult significance and occult leanings and the things that they're named, the ways that they are adorned. Again, because of the sunlight, it's hard for me to see what's coming up on camera, okay? so. I, I hope I'm getting a good picture of it for you. Okay, dedicated in 1987. This site possesses natural, excuse me, this site possesses national significance in commemorating the history of the United States of America, which you know has a history that's shrouded in mystery and Masonic and occult uh, symbology everywhere, symbolism. This is the tower. We're going in. We're going in, and then we're going to check out the Grand Canyon over to the right. First things first. the owl important important symbolism to the, to the Native Americans the snake the owl the turtle the cat the wolf now you know we okay you know uh, we talk about the boule the black leg we talk about the Zionist the Russian Khazar leg well None of the Native American chiefs was involved. Remember, we talked about this. What about the spirits? They weren't deceived at all by the spirits. Where did the Native Americans come from? You see? So see, whenever we idolize something or we look at something um, with a prejudicial eye or prideful, 
You allow for pride to give us a blind side. You won't see the side you need to see. That's the fallen angel side. Fallen angels went everywhere. Everywhere. Look at that. And put it down. And they disguise themselves as beings. And peoples of every land, on every continent, were deceived by these beings. Do you see? So we're going to look more at the canyon. You know, come and check it out for yourself. While while it's still something that people can do. Okay. Does that does the writing of the watchtower? Does that look familiar to you? Does that look familiar, the way that's written to you? Hey, I'm just showing you what it say. I didn't write it. So, we're going to go out there and check out the canyon next. All right? But we take care of some business. But uh, don't be fooled. Don't be game goofy. Don't be so preferential about what you believe or how you was raised or what you was told. Especially about yourself. Everybody like to try to geek you up and make you feel proud about something so you won't question it. Why, well, why do we do this? I don't care if it's Catholicism. I don't care if you was raised up in a household with black, black pride and the, uh, velvet paintings. The ladies with froze. Question. Question. Because if it's true, it'll stand up to your questioning and still remain true, right? So you got to question the Native American heritage. And how was it touched by the fallen? Like all things were. Like all things were. The agenda of the fallen was to take over mankind, every kind of man. Every kind of man. So we'll be back. Okay. Hope you're not afraid of heights. Heights. The earth worships thee, they sing praises to thee, sing praises to thy name. Psalm 66 and 4. Look at that. No, just here. Just here to pray. How beautiful. Yeah, that's beautiful. Look at how small we are. Yes. And how great he is. Amen. seems like I'm holding it at the right angle when I go back and look at the picture okay, I was just down there talking to y'all then you come up here you're not afraid of heights look way over look at the mound way over there look at how far you can see in the distance the illest, right? What's it all about? Showing you the glory and the magnificence of the Lord while you're talking about your God. Look at these things that man creates, puts pagan symbolism to. I don't care what ethnic group you with, some kind of ways that the fallen angels has deceived you. You won't pay any attention to the stories of the fallen angels. But you follow your ancient lore and you follow the myths and legends of your people. But you don't take them all the way back to the first ones. Go back to the Sumerians. Go back to the Anunnaki. You can't read the cuneiform. Go back to the beliefs of the Brotherhood of the Snake. 
Brotherhood of Cain, go back and realize that it all is the same story told different ways to to be made attractive to different types of people based on their need for self-image, self-deification, self-gratification for each nation is twisted and turned just a little taste the games change but the names are replaced and it's all about the same team Zazel and them you can find it best spelled out in Enoch check it out we, we will be looking at Enoch and the um, the book of Joshua next it keeps jumping over there in the video. You get everybody mind right I don't care where you're from what's your nationality what's your ethnicity some kind of way the traditions that you hold you've mixed your laws with your traditions the traditions that you hold have been tainted been compromised so by default you've ended up believing what fallen angels in their deceiving Peons want you to believe. And they're peons. Punks. The demons and those who the demons control. <laughs> they think they they think they control the demons. The demons control them. And they have uh, believed the lie that the demons have sold them. We're the most ancient ones, the fallen ones. Remember Dr. York used to tell us that this canyon got here by way of, um, well, it was a couple of different stories. You know how, how he did. He mixed it up. I remember one story was, um, and there's the Colorado River, if you can see it down there. One story was about a, a clashing into the earth. I believe Nibiru, maybe Nibiru had hit it, had hit Tiamat, and, and you know, then another one was um, that the piece of the earth that came from out of here created the moon. <laughs> I've heard that before. I'm not sure if that was Dr. York. I, I'm, I'm not going to put that on him. <laughs> but the bottom line is, look at how small you are. You're a god. You can't get a, a plant to grow good. Have mercy. You can't walk safely and peacefully through your hood. But you're a God. Look at what a God can do. Look at the colors. The massive size. Realize and recognize what you can't do. Look at what you can't do. I'll be back. It's a little darkish. Check it out. Is we're also told that uh, the first actual Native Americans were African. They sailed over using the winds on sailboats. That's where you get the Ol Olmec and the Tolek dynasties. Well, we know that the Fallen did their thing in Africa. We find the Tigris and the Euphrates River mentioned in the book of Genesis. We know the prominent role that was played by Africans all throughout the Old Testament. It's a, a, a book, the Old Testament, filled with focus upon lineage and family history. Who begat who? That family wasn't what you consider to be a Jew. 
But again, what did they do? They were influenced the way that we do, the way my people do. They were influenced by other beliefs, beliefs that were not true. And they took these beliefs to heart and they mixed them. They mix them with what was true. Once you mix the truth with a lie, it becomes untrue. And then all subsequent civilizations that carried on after these mixed up truths, really untruths, followed behind, regurgitate regurgitating their own versions of the same deceptions. Culture after culture. Worship of the moon. Worship of the sun. Worship of the animals, the spirits supposedly behind the animals. Various styles and forms still representing the fallen angels and their swarms. Look at them. Then you have the octagonal. Well, you're going to see a sun. You see the sun, God, there with the sun for a head. I don't know if I've got a name just right, but one of these frames, it should be in your sight. And then we go all the way down well, you know, the TP is a structure with a pyramid shape. But then you go all the way down and you see the octagonal shape there. Eight sides, of course. Universally, worldwide, you'll see the same symbols. The names change, but the game's the same. You'll see the eight, you'll see the pyramids, you'll see the sun. All uh, can be used as and should be used as evidence to the fact what the fallen angels had done. They went everywhere. You could even see you can see some mound action here. Several mounds. The mound builders. See there was one in particular I saw from out of the corner of my eye. Okay, well, I know I got it on video. It's a huge mound in the distance, but there's several mounds. Okay, pyramid-shaped mountains is one thing. But we're also talking about the structures made by the mound builders. The use of dead man's bones. An ancestral worship, necromancy, same thing, different names. The different spirits that of course would mystify the minds. Do you see the same black and white pattern used in the Twilight Zone's opening and in textbook cases of mind control. The same black and white pattern. Excuse me. See? Again, the black and white pattern. God representation and stag God, stag God representation, sacred geometrical symbols. But they give you a whole lot of mumbo jumbo as to what it means and blah blah blah. It's all what they were taught. Limited understanding. That reminds me of the. Um, Symbols that you see um, in the Sumerian folklore. Okay, where you get the Piccadilly heads from. The Piccadilly heads actually come from the, uh, the black headed ones 
ancient Sumerian lore, you'll see the same symbolism. So Dr. York had us gone just by telling us that the Anunnaki was ancient black aliens that was going to come back to save us. It's the same thing. They use racial pride, ancestral pride, to tell you that magic isn't magic, necromancy isn't necromancy. You turn it into ancestor worship. Same symbols. Over and over and over again. Always representing ghostly figures. Demons by any other name. Still the same. The duality that demons produce. Look up here. Our people. And look at the stars. The stars are beings, you see? Representative of living beings with faces. Stars. You see the huge serpent about to eat its tail. You see, you see again the duality, the black and white, the two pillar symbolism, the dual nature. something out of nothing. You think the position of the mound there, which we know is used for worship, and the tower here, and the canyon there, is all coincidental. There was worship done near this canyon because of something that the ancients remembered. Again, it was the mix of a, a lie and the truth. They were told certain truths. Not everybody, the priest class, always, the shaman, are told things so that they could control things. They would appear to control things, they themselves were being controlled by the beings that they thought they were empowered to call. It's a big trick bag, y'all. Incidentally, you have one of these, get rid of it. Get rid of it. Who do you trust? Who do you trust with your dreams and your dream inter interpretations of the things that come into your mind while you are asleep, communing with the Almighty, true and living? Who do you trust? Some company? Some shaman? Who owes? They owe. That's the problem. They owe. They owe the things to whom they dedicate these structures to. The same thing that you find with Santeria. Okay? You got to give some to get some. They owe. They end up owing. And they'll trade in you. They owe the gods a sacrifice anew. That's right. So you can't trust them in their books. None of the New Age gurus. They worse than Pastor Porkchop. Pastor Porkchop just trying to get a couple of dollars. These folks is trying to get your soul up out of you. Soul fetchers. Soul fetcher demons. Their whole goal is to snatch up your soul. Not for themselves, but so they can get themselves out of a jam. You see? You can't use things of 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 man or <laughs> things devised by man's hand to protect you from the unseen. 
Ephesians 6. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. That's any symbol. You can't use any symbol in and of itself and protect yourself. What if they throw you somewhere in a prison and take all your symbols from you? Take all your, your, your necklaces from you? Take all your precious stones and your crystals from you? Slap you in a van? Strip you butt naked? And take you somewhere and throw you in a cell? Will you be able to prevail? Will you be able to get in touch with that that is greater than you and greater than them too? See, that's the, that's the problem in putting power in any object. Somebody can take it from you. So the ancestors was wrong when they did that. I don't care what you say. You don't put no power in no objects. That's what they do. They have to put power in their objects. <laughs> For their, their gods have no form. They have no flesh of their own. You have to give them form. You have to create something for them. Make a vessel. They need a vessel. So man creates vessels, houses for them. I go for Solomon Temple too. That's right. Man creates a place for these spirit beings to dwell. And the next thing you know, that place becomes a living hell. Because it aren't just spirits that's dwelling there it's demons test the spirit by the spirit what type of spirit is it demon spirits we make dwelling places for them we worship them as they give us things in exchange they give us things in exchange small things but see they call upon certain ones everybody can't have it everybody can't get it they don't want everybody they want the best body a body that they can really get down in for whatever reason for one reason or another your bloodline your mind your spirit something that they know about you that you may not even know about yourself this is what they seek so everybody can't get in everybody can't be a star <laughs> everybody can't be a leader or a boss everybody can't be one of the priest class you see what made the shaman special so this knowledge was kept among them and it's the same way today Okay, this is Grand Canyon's Gateway. We are at the Navajo Point, um, again, of the Grand Canyon. And in case you think it was a bit of a stretch to relate that tower that you see way down there in the distance and the Navajo legends to the fallen angels, let's look at what the people here who put together the map for the park have to say about it. First of all, this is the Gateway, Grand Canyon's Gateway. See that? Secondly, look at the different areas of the park. You have the Tower of Ra. I hope you can get it. You have the T Tower of Ra, the Isis Temple, Bright Angel Canyon, Bright Angel Creek, Creek, Zoroaster Temple, Juno Temple, Venus Temple, and Vishnu Temple and Wotan's throne then of course the horseshoe mesa for the omega sign so um, there it is right there for you these people know what time it is what's really going on they understand the spiritual significance of this place and what the tribes were really deceived into believing versus what was really true concerning the fallen angels and their connection to this area so let's look uh, uh, at things with a discerning eye and don't just take everything at face value 
Um, the reason that places are called national and historic monuments are always connected to their occult significance in the land we live in. Now you see Diana Temple right there as well. Okay. All right. There it is.